perfect. All right, we'll do some screen share. Open a browser. Share. Mm -hmm. Hey, there we go. <clears throat> This is what we'll be talking about. Uh, just running a business and operating in these weird times. Uh, this thing came so fast and just hit everybody so hard that um, I wanted to try and reach out and show some things that I've found success in, let you know about some opportunities uh, that you may not know about, let you know about some options that you may not know about, and just overall chat and kind of think business for a second. Everybody's been so very concerned on finances and staying healthy and staying home and, and just taking care of yourself and those loved ones around you uh, that I thought it might be a good idea to go ahead and um, focus a little more on the business aspect of things. Um, is everyone here and can everyone hear me? Go ahead and type a comment in the section there if you can see the PowerPoint presentation and if you can hear me. Good. Good. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> cool. Uh, there's been some other people that have that have put some, together some business programs. Uh, I was part of one of the the talking heads uh, that just had a little gathering and and meeting of the minds with uh, Chad Lingefeld and uh, a couple other people through HL Flight, and so. With some of the webinar training that we've done, I just decided to throw one of these up and and put something together to help people concentrate and think about business and think about their options. Uh, so first of all, uh, this is Business During a Pandemic. It's presented by myself, Wayne Winton. It's copyrighted by Wayne's Lock Shop and Wayne's Lock Shop Productions. Copyright and all rights reserved for any text, video, and photos on this Webinar. I will be recording it and I will be sharing the link for free. The webinar is free. The link is free. Everything is free. This is simply me donating my time to help you and other businesses out there. If you could not attend or you think somebody that uh, that this class would help somebody and they could not attend, we will have the link uploaded in a couple of hours and we'll send that out. Uh, if you want to email me. I'll post my email in the chat section right now, and I will send you a copy. If that's what you would like, you can have the slides, you can have the link to the email, you can have whatever you have you want. This is me giving back to the community. <clears throat> now, this webinar will be focused on locksmith-related activities and businesses, but it will, the, the, the pieces will work across the board, I believe. <clears throat> So uh, just a few things to get out of the way. The options or the opinions and views expressed are just that. The information is simply the views and the opinions of myself and the information that I have gathered on my own and my own research. Uh, you're entitled to have different views and opinions based on what you find. The number one goal, excuse me, is to take as much information as you can and make the best decisions for you and your business as you see fit. Thank you, Edwin. I appreciate that. I will be checking comments off to the side. If you have questions, post your comments off to the side. This webinar is 50 slides long. It should be about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how many questions we have and how quickly we move through the content. It is currently 12.06. We are on slide two. <clears throat> so hopefully this, this slide says, I'll share what I know, what's working for me. You make your own decisions for your business and what's based on uh, based on your business and your needs. <clears throat> uh, one of the few things that we do for these is uh, we do take a little bit of sponsorship. So take one second to thank Wes with the Lock Caddy. This is one of the most underrated uh, pieces of equipment that I am now considering necessary for my business. Um, these things just work so well. I put these in my mobile service trucks and I, I just kind of glue them wherever you can you can uh, screw them down or just set them down 
But the lock caddy is awesome. It has all these individual little ports for every one of your cylinders, pins, key blanks. Uh, you know, you can stack them. You can see down at the bottom, you can stack them. They're just awesome. And it, it's really one of those things that I'm considering this every bit as necessary as a pin kit or tweezers, pinning tweezers, or any other tools that you would have in your arsenal. Uh, they have specialty ones for interchangeable small format, interchangeable core, uh, just regular style locks, your mortise locks and whatnot. They have just a ton of options and all the little goodie compartments are just so nice. You can actually load these all up and take them inside. You can take them outside. You can take them to your work area. So um, I love them. And like I said, I consider these every bit as essential as a pinning kit for me. Uh, the other one is frame and key machines. I uh, just built a new service truck that's now sitting, unfortunately, but uh, we've outfitted it with a frame and number two. Uh, I have seen these things go through wrecks. I've seen vans and trucks wrecked. Uh, and <laughs> one of the only things that ever survives is frame and number two. And you can take it out, put it in your new truck, and most of the time it's going to work just fine. I actually have some videos where I take the frame and number two key machine and just drop it, drop it on the concrete. Nothing happens. It still cuts the key. We actually mic it before we drop it and mic it after we drop it. And it cuts uh, pretty much the same, identical. Uh, they're awesome. Framen's awesome. Uh, if you're in the market for a key machine, any of the Framen tools are built based off of quality and longevity first. Uh, usually the Framen number two machine will outlast most locksmiths, not the other way around. Uh, usually... <laughs> The, the locksmith will wear out long before the machine ever does. So um, that's what I've chosen to put. I run both of them in both of my service trucks, and I couldn't be happier. The keys are accurate. It is the most durable, accurate key cutting machine on the market still to this day, in my opinion. <clears throat> All right, so let's get into the meat and potatoes of it. This thing came out of nowhere, and nobody really knows what to do. I mean, there's there's been pandemics before. We've had Spanish flu. We've had all these different things. But uh, a lot of them weren't really in our lifetime, at least mine. I mean, it, it's we've got a wide range of audience here. I'm 36, and we've never seen anything like this uh, in my generation. So um, nobody really knows what to do. Uh, everyone is really in a panic in these current times. And the, the only thing you can really do is just kind of remain relaxed and clear headed and then be ready to go ahead and start focusing on what you need to do. If you just start randomly panicking and randomly just doing nonsensical things that can impact your business, it's going to be it's going to probably be a poor decision later on. So let's all calm down take a minute and let's focus on the points that I'm going to point out in this um, slideshow in this PowerPoint and break each one of them down. Um, surviving this is going to be like building a house. You don't just look over there in the bare lot and see a house getting built. You build it one brick at a time. So let's break everything that we need to do down into one brick at a time and carry it over and eventually you will have your house built, but it, it's just going to take some time to get there. So um, doing your research and making educated choices is by far the best advice I can give you. There is a ton of information out there, almost too much. Some of it is good, about 10, 20% of it is good, and the rest is garbage. Just people using clickbait and um, trying, to, trying to direct you towards nonsense. So hopefully this will cut some of the nonsense out for you. Uh, be ready to pivot accordingly. So right now, everybody had like, like if we go back two months ago, everybody had their structure and their schedule for their day. And that's what you did is you came in, you came into work, you started your day and you had a schedule regimented. That has all gone completely out the window with all of the new regulations in place and all of the just the random things that we have to deal with. Um, during this pandemic and, and what comes down, what the government says, what the state says, and what your local county says. So you have to be ready to pivot and move uh, and, and be flexible and take those opportunities where you, where you can and when you can. <clears throat> We're going to be basing our next moves on whether you're working or not. Um, I consider myself 
this is how I came to my decision and you can come up with your own. Uh, people need food, water, and shelter and locksmiths provide security for their shelter. So that's why I'm considering it, uh, my business an essential business. It's going to, it's going to help the community if I can lock a building down that has a hundred employees in it so that they can all go home and stay home as opposed to them being in that building to maintain security of it because they can't lock it down. So one of the things that we do is go down and we lock buildings down, make, make sure doors that have never been locked before work, give them keys, et cetera, et cetera. So we're helping shut things down. And then we do have the occasional emergency. So far I've had people locked in their home, their handle broke, they couldn't get out uh, and just several other real true emergency steps. And we definitely go and, and run those calls um, to help the community out. So you really need to decide if you're going to work and if you're not going to work. If you do decide to work, then you need to have a plan. Uh, and, and it is going to provide a little bit of substantial income for you. If you choose not to work and you choose to close down, then you need to have a plan for your bills. Hopefully you have some kind of a savings uh, stashed away or, you know, rainy day fund, whatever it is, you're going to have to make that decision. Now, am I working? That's the biggest decision you can make for your business. Am I as the owner working? Then you can figure out what you're going to do with everything else. But that's the number one decision that you have to make. Am I working or not? Split it. There's not, not a lot of gray area. You're either working, running emergency calls, or you're not. If your business is not a locksmith related business, then you need to decide what is necessary and what is not and whether you're going to work or not based off of these same uh, credentials here. So there are a lot of options that you have out there right now as far as, you know, we're hearing a lot about these loans and a lot of these other things that are being offered. Uh, you know, your loans will probably need to be paid back. I mean, there is some talk about them being offered as a grant and you can write them off, but we don't know anything about them yet. So you really need to pay attention to that right now. And if you want to apply for them, that's fine, but just be aware of what that actually means. I mean, a loan is a loan and that's all there is to it. So be careful before you fill out those applications, okay? Let's see here. <clears throat> Some banks are offering what appears to be a deferred payment program that may, in large capital letters and quotation marks, allow you not to have to pay them back. But none of that stuff is out in writing yet. We don't know what is going to qualify for that and what is not going to qualify. So don't plan on taking something that you are not able to pay back. Um, that's the first thing that I can tell you is just don't apply for these loans unless you need them and don't apply for them unless you plan on paying them back. If you don't have to, that's great. But from the beginning, think of it before you apply that you will probably have to pay that back. If you are going to work, let's make sure you use proper protective equipment, gloves, hand sanitizer, uh, face masks have been made mandatory here now. So you, if you are in public, you have to have a mask on. And every state and every county differs. So you just have to pay attention to your local requirements and restrictions. Uh, these Venom steel gloves are about the best ones I've found. They got a little bit of texture to them. I can work with them. I can pin. I can rekey. I can open things. I can pick. I can do anything I need to. They seem to be the best one. Finding them, that's a good question. Um, it, these things are just in high demand. And unless you had a bunch before previously, you're just not going to have them now. Now, I normally stock the truck up all the time with this kind of stuff. I use hand sanitizer every day. I mean, as locksmiths, we touch the dirtiest, nastiest stuff, most contaminated, germ-infested things on the planet, uh, door handles. Guess what? Everybody touches on every single building, the door handle. So um, I'm used to carrying this stuff. So from now on, you should probably just have this stuff in your truck. Uh, I would highly recommend that anytime you can see this or get your hands on some, have a, a complete full bottle and a complete full box of gloves and a complete bag of masks and then have a backup redundancy. Have one on every single truck and don't have one, have two. Have one that you're using and then a full complete backup. <clears throat> Uh, you may need to hear, you may need to turn your microphone on, Ted. Uh, can everybody else hear me? 
Steve, your webinar about social media marketing helped my business almost immediately. Obviously, uh, complacent for many years. Okay, good. Well, good. My my webinar helped Steve. Uh, if you guys are interested in any of the other webinars or classes that I host or put on, uh, one of the, we've done two so far with HL Flake and myself. Uh, one of them is a one man, one hour continuous hinge installation, and the other is a social mar marketing, social media marketing webinar. If you would like links to any of those, take that email, my email, tricannylocksmithservice at gmail.com. Shoot me an email and I will send you a link. And it's all free. Everything's been free up, up until this point. Um, we're working to do some other stuff. We probably will have some, some really high quality webinars coming up on uh, leashy tools and safe lock servicing and stuff like that. But they, those are probably going to be paid for options. Um, but as of now, everything I've done, I've done it for free. <clears throat> okay, I can see in here now. Yeah, anybody that can't hear, check the microphone when you when I applied to come into this on my phone. So I have my main computer here that I'm presenting from, and then I can watch and see what's happening on my phone. It did ask to turn the mic on. So if you see anybody else that says there's no sound, ask them to check that little microphone box, and it, it'll it'll turn the mic on so you can hear. <clears throat> All righty. So start deciding what is needed and what is not. Start making a needed and not needed list. Stop any services that you that are not needed. Uh, Sirius XM radio apps, uh, apps on your phone that take, you know, 10 bucks a month or whatever it is, iTunes expenses or anything that constantly charges you every month. I would put those subscription based uh, programs on hold or cancel them for now until we get past this a little bit. That's the first thing you should do is those monthly costs. Paying for classes is fair. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Ted. Yeah, we'll we'll see what happens in the future here. Uh, we're going to try and make it as affordable as possible. But uh, that's pretty much what most of my time is dedicated to right now. I'm running emergency calls and I'm building webinars. So that's, that's pretty much all I'm doing. Um, applying. Let's see here. So Netflix code software, any other bills that are on auto pay, go ahead and go through your emails, check those all out and shut them down if if you need to. I mean, if you can still pay them and you're not uh, being affected too bad, then then go ahead and keep them. But those are if you're looking for fat to trim, those are the first places I tell people to look is look at those auto pay services, Netflix, uh, iTunes, Sirius XM, any of those kind of stuff, code software, any of that that you don't need. If you're not working right now, you don't need code software. Okay. It's plain and simple. That goes back to the other slide. Decide whether you're working or whether you're not. If you're working, you probably need your code software. Uh, applying for online education, webinars, video training, and education are where you want to keep uh, everything for now. Okay, so now is the time to learn. If you are not working that much and you are at home, use this time for education don't waste any time there's no reason that you can't be you can't keep yourself and your brain every bit as active now as you were two months ago or during the normal aus good to see you're here so you want to stay sharp and you want to hone your skills and practice your trade uh the locksmiths in the room you know, practice your lock picking. You're sitting on the couch watching Netflix, pick up a lock, pick up a bucket of lock, pick up that bucket of locks that's been in your truck or your shop or your van forever and practice picking, sharpen those skills. If you do safe lock manipulation, start manipulating. If you, whatever your main focus is that you just don't have a lot of time for in most cases, do it now. That's what you need to be doing is practicing, sharpening, honing, and doing everything that you need to do. So stay stay sharp at your job. Things are going to return to normal or somewhat normal, and you're going to need those skills. And the ones that are going to survive are the ones that have the sharpest skills to put right back into the workforce. <clears throat> employees. If you decide to shut down, obviously you're going to have to shut down your employees. Uh, if you decide to work, you may be just the owner like myself that continues to work. Uh, my employee chose to shelter in place. He chose to uh, 
go home and, and stay with his family. And that's perfectly fine. We respect that. And uh, in fact, that, that works out just fine. There's just enough workload to keep me going a little bit. And um, he's happy with the choice he made as well. So as for personal preference, uh, I would like to give the, the employee the opportunity to choose what they want to do, uh, whether they'd like to work or stay at home. Providing restricted hours or emergency service to those that wish to continue to work. You have to let them know, hey, this isn't going to be uh, a 40 hour a week job. This is going to be for emergencies only. So one of the things you can consider as a business owner is possibly offering uh, working off a commission <coughs> commission instead of hourly so that you really you're only paying for the calls that are getting ran and, and money's getting brought in. If you charge $100 for lockout, you know, offer your employee 30 to 50% of that, depending on what you do. I offer 30% during the normal business hours and I split it 50, 50 for after hours calls. You're bringing money in, you're getting money from that call. You're making money off of that employee in that call and you're not paying for anything that's unnecessary such as hourly. So that's one of the things that you can do that I've chosen to do. Um, <clears throat> those that choose to stay home should be entitled to unemployment benefits. So this qualifies for both your employee and yourself if it is set up correctly. Now, <clears throat> I looked into it just in case everything fell completely off a cliff. I have my business set up as a LLC. It's Aspen Locksmith LLC, and then we file as an S Corp. And the way that my paycheck runs is I get a paycheck just like I'm an employee of my business. So I am the owner, but I'm also set up just like an employee is. Number one, I move safes and do a lot of, you know, what would be considered dangerous or sketchy work. So I want to be covered under workman's comp. If I get hurt at work, even being the owner, I, I pay into workman's comp in case I ever need it. It's a cushion. It's a security blanket. It's a backup. It's a redundant backup on top of backup on top of backup. I have my regular savings. I have my rainy day savings. I have, you know, my, oh no, everything hit the fan savings. And then I have my real deep backup plans, which is, all right, I'm so injured that I cannot work for months on end or even years. Uh, we have those set up that way. Unemployment is the same way. I pay into my unemployment. So if I do need to lay myself off, I can. I have not done so yet. But according to my CPA and according to everything that I've checked into research-wise, I should be able to lay myself off and be able to collect unemployment. And your business can remain still in business. It's just dormant, but it can remain in business. So you don't have to go out of business to do so. So those are some of the long range plans that I'm making. Um, business is a chess game and you need to see 50 moves down the line. Okay. Whenever something comes up, you need to have an answer. Something this comes up, this is like, they could just shut everything down and say, okay, absolutely not. I could get pulled over. They say, Hey, no, no more locksmith work. You cannot work. You cannot be out. <clears throat> I got to have a plan for that. So if that happens and things get worse, that's my plan. I'll lay myself off collect unemployment benefits, and then just, you know, live off of those accounts and those benefits until things pop back up. With the news coming in the news uh, as of right now, it looks like things are starting to, there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. So uh, the curves are flattening. Um, <clears throat> it looks like things are going to start to return to at least somewhat normal, uh, fairly I would say by next month, things will start opening up and at least quit shutting down. I would say as soon as they start loosening restrictions instead of adding them, that would be a good sign. And it looks like that's probably coming in the coming weeks. No one knows for sure. So uh, make sure that if you do need to lay yourself off, you can. If you're not currently set up to where you can lay yourself off and where you're not paying into those benefits, Talk to your CPA or whoever does your taxes and see how you can get to the point where you could. So that way you can have that security blanket. We're not just worrying about what hap what's happening now. We need to be focusing and using all of the information that we have now for next time. There will always be a next time. There's always going to be some crazy thing that happens. We've seen it with 9-11. We've seen it with this. We've seen it with... Um, the depression or the, the big recession that we had in 2008, there's always going to be something looming 
in the midst. And, you know, when we hit those really, really high numbers, the stock market was on a bull run, the economy was on a bull run, everything was just high, high, high two months ago, uh, you know, back in January or, or whenever it was. Now, everything's got to come down. What goes up must come down and we're coming down. So use everything that's in this program to plan for next time too. Don't just use it for now, use it for next time. <clears throat> Uh, there are some PPP loans that are designed to assist with payroll. I've applied for all of these loans and I haven't heard anything back. So uh, we'll get an update every now and then. We'll focus on the loan section a little bit more because I'm sure that's a pretty hot topic that people want to hear about. I applied for it so that, I mean, if it's a loan, I can pay it back. If, it's get, if it gets forgiven, that's great too. Uh, everybody could use extra money and... We'll see how it turns out. Uh, the outlook is is less than flattering at this point. So um, just do do know that those PPP loans are designed for payroll expenses. And if you can apply for them, go ahead and do so if you need the money and just be prepared that you may have to pay it back. <clears throat> All right. So your owners can look into unemployment. If you choose to close down as an owner, you should be entitled to unemployment benefits if you paid into the program and you are set up as an employee of your company. I personally know that I am eligible for unemployment benefits if it becomes necessary. I've double, triple checked with my CPA to make sure that that was the case. Uh, you should check with your accountant or CPA to see if your business and payment uh, see how your business and payment is structured and see if you apply and if you're eligible for those options. Now is the time to make those changes if needed. Now is the time. Tax season's coming up, almost gone. I mean, it's April 15th um, coming up is when taxes are normally due. But uh, obviously this year's a little bit different, but now's the time to make changes for next fiscal year. So if you're not set up the way you want to be to have that safety net and those cushions, Talk to your accountant and CPA and see what you need to change to do so. PPP loans and disaster loans. There are two main loan programs that I am aware of right now that I have applied for. Uh, one of them is Econ Economic Injury Disaster Loan or EIDL. EIDL, okay? These are offered by the SBAC, the Small Business uh, association and they they have a separate one which is a PPP or Paycheck Prote Protection Program loan PPPs. So these are the two uh, <clears throat> loans that you can apply for and that possibly could get you up to ten thousand dollars each. You have to do your own research on them. You have to go to the SBA website to make your application and to check and see all of the details. I can't give you all the details because a they change randomly and b nothing it's a whole lot of gray area and it doesn't seem like anything is set in stone originally when the edi or the, i'm sorry the eidl loans or the economic injury disaster loans came out they said we'll get you ten thousand dollars in your bank account if you can prove that you lost any income from last year's date to now and we'll get you the money in three days well that was a week ago so, <clears throat> uh, we have a question. Mario says, uh, does your business have to be registered as a corporation in order to qualify for unemployment benefits for your company? That's a question for your CPA. I am filed as an LLC. And then when we file taxes, we file as an S corp. That's how I get paid. I can't tell you how to sign up when, what you need to sign up for only your accountant and CPA can set you up. All I know is that I collect a salary paycheck every week, just as any employee does. And every single week, the deductions go into payroll taxes. They go into um, <clears throat> the unemployment benefits and they go into workman's comp benefits. I pay into all of those. And that's my triple, quadruple backup safety net. That's how I have mine set up. It would be best to talk to your CPA or accountant. Less business structuring. Okay. Yeah. It's the way that you pay your taxes and the way your W 2 set up. That's a good point. Very good. So, 
the loans will go quickly, so apply as soon as possible. Uh, when I applied, I think I was like one of the third, I was like 33,000th, the 33,000th employee or not employee, uh, person to sign up. So I got in pretty quick. Uh, we got in last Thursday. So it was over a week ago. It was, I, I believe I applied Thursday or Friday last week. And then as soon as the PPP loans came out, we applied for those on Saturday. Uh, or no, we had to wait till Monday because they were closed. So the PPP loans came from the bank. They came from US Bank. That's who I used. Um, the uh, EIDL loan came from the SBA website directly. So these are two links right here. Um, if you want these links, I'll email them to you. If you want to shoot me an email, once again, I'll send this whole PowerPoint to you. It's it's fine for me to send it to you. You can have the whole thing. Then you can grab these links and go there and find out what they have to offer for you. But they are going to be first come, first served, and they are going to go quickly. If you need to do the math on the amount of stimulus package uh, for the small businesses out there, they are not equal. You have this many businesses and you have this much money. Okay. So they're offering $10,000 a piece to what, like 20,000 businesses or tw I'm sorry, 20 million businesses. Um, that's a whole lot of money and a whole lot of businesses. And they just don't, the numbers don't add up. Every single person that's done YouTube videos or uh, by CPAs and, and whatnot, or economists, th the number doesn't add up. So the first come, first serve, get it in there, get it in and get it in now. That's the best advice you can get. And don't count on it. You cannot rely on these, okay? These would be nice programs that are designed to provide hope and possibly assistance, but do not count. I personally do not plan on seeing a dollar from either one of them, and I applied a week ago. If, if the money comes in great, I will put it to good use. I will use it to pay business expenses. Uh, if my employee wants to come back, we'll use it to pay them. We'll use it for economic stimulus, we'll use it for payroll, and we'll use it for all the things that the business needs to have, but I'm 100% not counting on seeing a dollar. <clears throat> all right, no problem. Think of getting alone like a dog eating his tail. Yeah, that's pretty much the way that it is, is, is the dog is eating his tail. You're gonna go in circles uh, every time. It's like getting a test, you know what I mean? Like. Okay, cool. I don't feel good. How do I get a test? Oh, we don't have any. Oh, okay, cool. So I still don't feel good. How do I get a test? Uh, you can't. Okay, cool. Great. That's awesome. That's kind of how it's going. Um, they're buying time is what they're doing. They're buying time and they're trying to come up with answers and they're doing the best they can too. I mean, they try and figure out how to solve the world's problems or the United States problems, um, you know, for 50, 100 million people. It's ridiculous. It's going to take time, organization, and nothing is going to happen anywhere near the speed that you want it to. You, people may not even see these loan, uh, these loans come through for months. Like it could be three, four, five, six months before you see any money, just based off what I heard. Uh, the PPP loan, uh, the payroll protection loan application was through US Bank. As soon as I pulled out my bank app to check my bank accounts, it said, Hey, here's our stimulus package. I believe what the government's doing is the government told the banks, hey, you fill out the applications, you take some of that burden on, and then we'll secure the funds. So that, that's just what I am speculating happened. The government is saying, all right, you guys put, get these application programs out there. We'll back you up. They'll let the banks do a lot of the vetting and the sorting and the application process because they have the means to do so. It'll break it into smaller chunks. And then the government just cuts those banks a check later. That's the way I think that it works, but nothing's been said yet. <clears throat> so uh, mine was to U.S. Bank. Go to your local bank for the PPP loan applications. See if they have options and see if they're eligible and see if you're eligible. Get those applications in now. Uh, you can see, hold on one second. All right, so you can see this was the one that this was the uh, confirmation that I got. This is the D, the EID loan or the disaster assistance loan. I swatted out my number here, but it was like 30,000 something. Um, this is me proving that I applied and they said, we'll send you an email. That was last Thursday. Nothing. 
nothing yet. So anyways, um, we've tried, we've got those, we've got those loans in and we've got the applications in and I will fill you in as we move forward with this. <clears throat> if something comes up, I will definitely post and let you know, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, wherever you follow me. Uh, if you follow me on social media, I will let you know what's happening. The, you need to assess your situation and where you are. Consider all of your options for your business. <clears throat> Paying rent and mortgages, if you can, uh, is, is a good idea. If you can pay them, keep paying them. Uh, if you need to ask for a deferment or a pause, it will probably still need to be repaid. I mean, you got to figure if, if, the, if you're renting a building, and let's say for your business, you're renting a building that is owned by a person or a company. And if everybody else in that building is not paying their rent, then they can't keep the upkeep on the building. So they're not just going to say, okay, sorry, wave the wave three months worth of rent. That's not going to happen. Sometimes you can talk to your lender, you can talk to your uh, provider and you can see if you can get a month or two or three added towards the end of your lease or see if you can use your first month's rent, last month's rent and deposit, see if you can work any of those numbers. But that's going to be based on an individual basis. And that's going to determine whether or not you're going to be able to move forward with that is de depending on every single individual person. What you need to do is talk to them, communicate what your needs are and what you're able to do to them and communicate with them about what you can do, when, and why. Do not think that you're just going to say, hey, I can't pay my rent this month, or next month, or the month after that, and it's just going to go away. That is probably not going to happen. The probability of that is 0. 0.000001, okay? Those people are going to want their money back too. Their business is too. Their business is renting you and your business the space that you're in. Same way with home. If you're home, personal finances, if you're renting a house or you're making a mortgage, guess what? The bank needs your money to pay their loans back. Everybody needs the money. We're just restructuring how it gets paid through a different timeline. That's how you need to think of it. Don't think of it as, hey, you're cutting me a break and I'm not going to have to pay this. It's just getting tacked on to the end. So you're still going to have to work twice as hard to make up that income to pay for those things. <clears throat> cool. Steve says that he right refinanced his vans at 1.99%. Uh, if you have the opportunity to refinance your vehicles, your vans, uh, whatever it is that you have buildings, the interest rates are low and that might be a good option for you to do so. It's probably also going to give you that little bit of wiggle room or that break that you're going to need where you're going to have a month or two where you're not going to have a bill. So that's a really good point, Steve. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, restructuring money, restructuring loans, restructuring everything uh, would definitely be a good idea at this point in time if you have the means to do so. <clears throat> it's also going to be a little bit difficult to show. You're going to want to do that fast as well because you have all you have the last four months or three months of 2020 to show income. You're not going to have anything to show or you're going to have very little dismal income to show if you wait by the end of this month and that'll be on your that'll be on your income statements and your bank statements you're not going to show any income nobody's going to let you refinance nobody's going to give you a loan <clears throat> you can stop you can stay on top of your bills if you can stay on top of your bills you will be far ahead of the game as things return to normal as far as now goes i have paid my rent i've paid all my bills i've paid everybody on time. And I want to keep it that way because I don't want to start out when everything starts coming back to normal. I don't want to start out in a hole. Some of us can do that. Some of us cannot. If you can do it. If you are short on cash, call your lenders and communicate with them. Communication is going to be the lubrication that you need to have a efficient conversation between you and your lenders, personal, business, or otherwise. Your, your landlord's Anybody that you're in contact with, if you owe them money, you need to call them, contact them, email them, and be upfront. You need to assess every situation and attack it head on, face to face, and deal with it. If you go bury your head in the sand, 
It's only going to cause problems. You're going to delay them. Then you're going to have people that are already angry at you for not communicating with them and not paying anything. And the conversation is going to go completely different. Just treat people that, the way that you would want to be treated if you were in their position. If all your business was, was the income from a building that you rented out to 20 tenants and all of them quit paying, you'd want to have some communication. That's all you need to do is treat people the way you'd want to be treated. That's their business on their end too. Talk to them like you would want to be talked to. <clears throat> uh, your cell phone providers and carriers should be willing to work with you. I've heard a lot of things from Verizon that, uh, you know, they're not going to turn your phones off. They're not going to, you know, they're not just going to shut you down and flick a switch and, and put you out of business. But the bill doesn't stop either from what I understand. You still have to pay the bill. You're still gonna pay for minutes. You're just, they're just not shutting your phone off now. So they're gonna, that that bill is just gonna build and build and build and build over the next three months or however long it is until you can start paying on it again. And at some point they're gonna say, probably, you know, in six months, they're gonna say, hey, your bill's way overdue. We need to get this caught up and taken care of, or we're going to have to shut you down. And they'll shut you down in September instead of now. Uh, so in September, they could be, you know, things could be rolling along nice and smooth, just the way things were before. Um, and if you have a $2,000 cell phone bill and you can't pay that, they'll probably shut it off then. So keep that stuff in mind. As long as you can stay on top of it, stay on top of it. But they're, they are trying to work with you so that you can stay moving and active and connected during this time to where you can defer the payments. So uh, maybe you can set it up on a payment plan. Maybe you can tell them, hey, I'm not gonna be able to pay you for the next two months, but see if you can add 30 or $40 to my monthly bill after that to get me caught up. Come up with ideas. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna go to the question board here. Actually, I'm gonna read the last line and then we'll go on. Uh, ask about any options that are available. Any other options? that are available, ask your lenders, your providers, anybody you owe money to, ask them for what they can offer you. It'll at least get the wheel spinning and the ball rolling in the right direction. 100% <clears throat> agree in communication with many of our landlord vendors just trying to work things out. Uh, they're not picking up the garbage. Yeah, so, you know, everybody's doing what they can. Um, there's no specific answer, it's just, do what you can, communicate with those that you need to communicate, and treat people like you want to be treated yourself. <clears throat> Getting your finances in order first. This will ease your stress level, all right? Everybody's stress level is whoosh, through the roof right now. You need to face your bills head on. You need to not bury your head in the sand. You need to face them, grab a hold of them, and control your bills as best you can. <clears throat> you need to get them under control. Once you have the main points under control, you can focus on the other aspects. So, all right, biggest bills for me are rent, payroll, phone bill, whatever it is, my supplier bill, um, any of that stuff. Pick your main ones, get those taken care of, and then deal with the smaller ones as they come. Don't waste any time doing this. You have the time right now to talk to all these people and tell them what's going on. And you have the time to figure out a proper payment strategy to figure out how to get yourself out of your own mess, okay? You have all the tools to do it. F spend the time, face it head on, and figure that part out. Uh, there's plenty of time to have, so use every single minute of every single day. Do not waste any time. That's gonna be the biggest thing. If you sit there and you go and sit on the couch and you become sloth-like, then that's it. You're not going to take care of anything and everything's going to fall apart around you. That is not the way to go. Be upfront and be positive and be moving forward. Every foot needs to go in front of the other. Don't go backwards, go forwards. <clears throat> Another great thing that I've done with all this time is organize emails for both business and personal. Uh, I had five about 5,000 emails floating around and I've condensed those down. I've responded to all the ones that need response. Uh, I've trashed all the ones that need to be trashed, unsubscribed from all the garbage. Um, you know, take a day or two or three or however long you need and don't get overwhelmed with it. Just pick little pieces, set two hours aside, say, hey, today, 
two hours I'm going to spend on emails. I'm going to clean out my email files. You may even find an old customer in there that just kind of fell through the cracks and you might even find some ways to generate some business through those emails. Um, <clears throat> use, let's see, go through your emails and use the emails to, to categorize or categorize and organize them. I use my email like a personal filing cabinet. Um, it's a huge, almost like a, I use it like a cloud database. You know, I store photos, I store clients, I store topics, uh, all this stuff. I just store all in my webinar or I'm sorry, in my, in my email. And then I have all those lists and in Gmail, it's a huge, huge, um, platform that allows you to organize it into categories and subcategories and customers, you know, uh, commercial customers, residential, uh, NSP companies, all that fun stuff, insurance, you can break all that stuff down, organize all that, and then you can flow through it and find things when you need to access that information later. That's been one of the best uses of my time during this time is going through and organizing my email platforms. <clears throat> Um, also is the perfect time to finish any bids or projects in the pipeline. Uh, when things return to normal, your bid will be complete while others are not. I mean, I, the main things that are keeping me afloat right now are, uh, city and government, um, work. They, their budget cuts or their budgets were the same. I mean, they already got money approved to do whatever those projects were in most cases, uh, Go ahead and be bold and submit those bids. Don't be afraid to ask, hey, were you guys still planning on moving forward with this? I have gotten over, I've gotten five major, major tasks and bids, both submitted and approved in this time, in the within the last two weeks. I've had five of them. All of them were over $1,000. Uh, some of them were $2,000. There's a lot of stuff out there and don't be afraid to be bold and put that out there and at least ask, hey, we've got lots of time. If you guys are interested in doing this project, now's the time to do it. Hey, I could even offer you a 10% discount if you do it by the end of the month. Those are some key tactical ways to where you can entice that customer to bite on that bid and get that little bit of work that you can get done, done. Um, so just don't be afraid to push those things out there. Don't be afraid to talk to people and don't be afraid to pursue new work. Or if you're not working right now and you're going to be shut down through the shutdown, you're going to shut down through the end of the month or whenever they start opening things back up, you can at least have those ready to go and say, hey, are these approved? Yes or no. While everybody else is doing what you're doing now in a month from now. So you're doing it now, you're taking this class and you're opening up all these different ideas, you're getting everything organized, yourself is organized, your emails are organized, your bids are sent in, everything's organized and done, you're ready to go. Everybody else is sitting around, not doing anything, and they're going to be doing this a month from now, you're going to be ahead of the game, ready to go. <clears throat> Uh, you can also send review links out to past customers and build your online presence. Right now is the time for reviews. Google has shut down uh, some of the reviews. I have used, I've reviewed several other businesses specifically intentionally trying to figure out what they're doing right now. Two of them posted, two of them did not. I don't know what the algorithm is, but one of them allowed me to post and the other one said, hey, thank you for your submission of your post, but we're not going to get to this until later. It's not going to post and it's not going to be up on up for public view uh, for 30 days or whatever it is. But you can still get people to send those links. You can still get them to fill them out. And then I'm betting in a, in a month or two, they will be released and they will add to your profile. So still take that chance, be bold, don't waste time, contact those past customers via email or text message, go through your phone. Just like going through your emails and organizing everything, go through all your text messages. Anybody, any customers that you've text messaged, send them a review link. Email them a review link. Make it as easy as possible to get reviews for your business, for Google, Facebook, Yelp, all of the fun different platforms and organizations. If you're interested in how to get more better reviews, uh, my social media class covered that in depth. Again, you can email me and I can send that to you. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm going to take a second and read. <clears throat> Emailing our customers. 
uh, materials, uh, accounting departments, processing, many are paying CC. They seem to be understanding. Yeah, that's a great point. So um, contacting your customers, getting those that can pay to pay is is definitely a good thing. Uh, accounts receivable on your end. I am currently working on bill collecting and getting reminders out. So this is my day. Like, all right, two hours on emails, spend an hour on getting reviews, uh, going through my phone, text messages, spend two hours on accounts receivable, go into that QuickBooks file or your invoice pile or whatever you use, send those reminders out and start poking at people. Hey, you got a bill, you got a bill, you know, we can, we could really use the payment right now. Uh, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> uh, this is actually a significant portion of my business and a large portion of clients are on 30 day net terms. So I've got, boy, if I threw a number out there, I probably got $30,000 in accounts receivable owed to me. Um, as of right now, these expenses are actually, you know, what's covering my bills and, and what's letting me remain afloat, uh, at this particular point in time. So, the only money that you can make is what is already owed to you. Start working on collecting that stuff. <clears throat> but you also have to keep in mind that others are going to be going through hard times as well. So try not to be too aggressive with collections. Um, you don't want to shun people away. You don't want to give them a bad taste You don't in their mouth. You don't want to be rude. You don't want to chase your customers off. But you do want to say, this is the communication that we're having. I'm communicating that we still need to, this bill paid. And if you have the ability to pay it, please do so as we need every dollar that we can get right now. <clears throat> He's been doing a great job of collecting past bills. Yeah, get, get family members. Um, if you have a secretary, have her do it. Have the wife do it. Have whoever you can do it. Uh, if that's something that is best delegated to somebody else, and your time is better spent, you know, making some more money or doing something different than, you know, focus on bringing that money in and you can delegate the bill collecting to somebody else. <clears throat> All righty. So check your QuickBooks cash flow. Uh, use this time to learn where the majority of your expenses went and why. Boy, when I was going and just blowing and going so fast in, uh, you know, at the beginning of 2020 in January, I didn't have time to look and see where money was going. I didn't. I just, I, hey, money's coming in. The bank account looks good. Awesome. Now I have the time to break down each one of those. How much am I spending on advertisement? How much are we spending on food? How much are we spending on entertainment? How much are we spending on uh, supplies? What exactly is my markup? Uh, where are the most calls going? What are the most calls that I run? It, are lockouts my number one income source? For me, it's definitely not. Uh, lockouts come as icing on the cake for me. And usually those bigger projects, uh, electronic access and, and things like that, installing hardware, large master key systems, those are going to be the bulk of my income. So it's good to know that, but you need to see, you need to sit down and see. So I've already dedicated my hours for emails and bill collecting. Now I'm going to dedicate another two hours to examining where my cash flow is and what is costing me money and how I can adjust that in the future. When things are really good, you just don't notice the little things where that money just leaks out and dribbles off to and disappears to. Now that you're really restricting everything and you're paying attention to everything and you're really trying to cut down on monthly expenses, now's the time to cut some of that stuff that you don't need, kind of like we talked about in the first slide. Closely examine your profit, profit and loss, loss reports and then check your taxes. You, you're just getting your taxes done. Get with your CPA or your accountant and learn where the money is going and why. At Just like think of it as somebody that has a problem with their lock or whatever business that you own or have. If, if they tinker with it, they might get it figured out. But chances are it's an overcomplicated process that you can do in 10 minutes and know exactly what's going on with it and fix it right, proper, and prevent problems in the future. Use your CPA or your accountant the same way. You can bring your problems to them and you can say, look, 
We are hemorrhaging money here, 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 and here. How do I fix this? And they will give you options. Or you can say, hey, what expenses can we cut? What do we really need? Do we need this much of this large of a package with QuickBooks software? Do we need this large of a package with this? Do we need all of these expenses every month? What can we do to start trimming some fat and start trimming things down so that we can save some money? Also make a list of those things that you trim down. So when things open back up and you want to add those services back, you could certainly do so. And you've got a list already made to do it. But get with your CPA, get with that professional, use and listen to their professional advice that you're paying for and use it to the maximum extent that you possibly can. <clears throat> uh, now, let's see, working on SEO and business listings. Now is a perfect time to add photos to your timelines uh, and anything else you can do social media wise. If you're on Facebook, get some photos out there, go through your phone, check out all the last jobs that you did. You know, if you take pictures of each job, which I do just for, just for sending it to in the uh, online software for invoicing, I send pictures of before and after for each jobs to protect myself. Excuse me. So I can go through my phone and I can find all those pictures and post them on Instagram as long as they don't have, you know, key codes uh, or key cuts or they don't contain any security information. The inside of somebody's safe, safe combination, um, key cuts, et cetera, then I think it's a great idea to start working on those platforms and get that get that media out there. You know, if you did a continuous hinge installation or you did a rekey or you did a knob change or you put in electronic access somewhere and you have photos of it, post those on your social media pages and attract people and let those people know what you're doing. Um, manage your reviews, go online, respond to all of the reviews that you currently have. This is a big topic in my social media class. Go in there, address those. Everything you need to be doing right now, you need to be doing face to face, face to face. You cannot duck and hide and bury your head in the sand. You have to do it face to face and you have to attack everything head on. So manage those reviews. If you have some bad ones, talk to those people, get them hammered out, come up with a solution, do whatever it takes to get your online presence looking like a five star gleaming shining star. That's what you need to be doing right now. So now I've got, you know, six hours of my day plan. The last two hours of my day, we'll go out and we'll manage reviews. We'll send emails and text messages out and we'll work on getting more reviews. So there's my whole day. I already got a 10 or 12 hour day when I'm not doing anything. Even though I'm not working, I'm still working. And I'm not trying to tell you to be an overzealous workaholic. Uh, that's my choice. And that's just the way my brain is, is kind of wired. There's, if I'm not doing anything, I just, That'll drive me insane. So these are all the things that I'm doing. Break it down into manageable bite-sized chunks that you can manage. The worst thing you can do is try and do all of this at once and then overwhelm yourself, burn yourself out, and then you shut down. So don't do that. Don't, don't burn out and shut down. Break it down each individual section, each individual day. Even if you need to break it down into, I'm going to do this for an hour today. I'm going to do this for an hour tomorrow. That's fine. You're still making progress, forward momentum, and you're not going backwards. Uh, try and encourage activity. Send a review link to any customers in your phone. Check out my social media marketing webinar for more tips on building your online presence. It's right here. Again, if you email me with the email above, I will send you the video link and you can watch it. It's like three hours long, but it covers everything you need to know about social media, marketing, and anything else online. Getting reviews, what to do with bad reviews, etc. Do we have any questions? I'm going to open it up. Uh, I would like, we are at about an hour. So we started at noon. It is now one. Uh, we're on slide 23 of 50. The rest will probably go a little bit quicker. So we'll probably be here another half hour or so. Uh, if you have any questions, post them now. If you could and you're listening, just say hi, hello. Let us know that you're still here. And um, let us know that the chat is still working and that everybody's still awake. Hey, if anybody's asleep, hello. I see you. Don't be asleep. Okay, we got a lot of stuff to cover. <clears throat> All right. Get that bucket list taken care of. Any projects that don't require much funding should be done. Every time you, every time you said, hey, I'll get that done one day, guess what? Today is the day. Now is the day. Right here, right now, go get it done. 
How many times do we sit in our truck and say, oh man, I really need to do that one day. Whew. Okay. Guess what? You got time now. No excuses. Do it now. Business improvement, cleaning, organization, personal, home, or business. It doesn't matter what you're doing as long as you're not burying your head in the sand and trying to pretend this is not happening. Go out there and it'll actually take your mind off of it. Instead of sitting there and being mopey and you know feeling sorry about everything and just worrying about everything, activity for me clears the mind, it clears the conscience, and it clears everything out so that I feel productive and I feel better about myself and my business at the end of every single day. It's therapy for me. So make sure that you stay busy and improve all of these things. Van organization. Again, if you organize your van, guess what? When everything comes back up, you're going to be working way more efficient than the guy that didn't. So who's going to get more calls ran in a day when everything opens back up? You are. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, not much time for a beer or two. Well, there's always, there's always the afternoon, man. You can do any of this stuff if you have a beer or two, you know, you can, as long as you're not driving or going out, if you're staying home, you can check emails and have a beer or two. I hear you, Keith. <clears throat> so get organized and clean that truck or office out. Here's my truck. Whew. It looks like it just threw up all over the ground, doesn't it? Right. So, uh, completely not functional, absolutely ridiculous. I was spending more time looking for parts than I was finding them or doing my job. So now everything is nice and organized, nice and clean, and we don't have any of this nonsense anymore. Now I'm efficient and I can find everything I need quickly. Yep, take your inventory. That's exactly, I think I mentioned that later. Uh, thank you. Uh, and yeah, definitely take inventory and make sure you don't, you're not double ordering anything for sure. <clears throat> Look at that. That's the next slide there, Rhino One. Uh, <clears throat> take inventory for insurance purposes. Take inventory for all of your current stocks and or parts in stock. So yes, you do not double order your parts, but and you have an inventory of what you have. If you have operating software like QuickBooks, you can actually enter all this stuff into it, and it'll tell you when you need to order more as you sell it. <clears throat> take inventory of tools and expensive equipment. Label and organize your tools, uh, possibly engraving tools. This is a great time, and, and it's something that you never have time to do. I take, I, I burn my phone number and logo from my key stamp. I get it hot. I have a key stamp that has my name, my company name, and phone number all on it, and I get it really hot, and I burn it into all of my tools. So that way, if anything comes missing... Uh, or shows up at a pawn shop, I can recognize it and identify it, and I can prove that it's mine. Um, label and personalize your tools, possibly engrave them. Uh, take pictures of serial numbers of tools for proof later in the event that you have a robbery or an accident and need proof for an insurance claim. So here's something you can do to think proactively in the future. What happens if my truck gets in a total and complete wreck, drives off a cliff, and nothing is left inside, or somebody steals it and drives it off a cliff. All of your stuff is gone. What are you going to do? Do you know what to do? Do you have any clue what to do? I had an accident in September uh, with my truck, and or I'm sorry, no, it was October, and uh, it was amazing how much the insurance company wanted to fight me and argue with me about every little thing, and so that taught me that I need to be extremely well prepared for everything that I'm doing. So I need to document, I need to have proof. And in the event that something happens, I have all my ducks in a row and I can collect that insurance money that is much needed at that time of your loss. So getting your insurance straight and right is, this is the time to do it. Uh, I've been selling a good, let me go blow our bills, clean out the shop. Yeah, clean out your shop, clean out whatever you got. Um, if you can sell it, sell it, sell it online, put it up on eBay. If you're a locksmith, don't sell any locksmith tools like leashy tools and lock picks and stuff like that. That would be bad. Don't sell that to the general public. But there's lots of marketplaces online for locksmiths to sell their tools. Uh, if you just have general lock stock or parts, get it up there on eBay, get rid of it, get it going, bring some income in. That's an excellent point. Uh, here is how I label my tools. So I have these little metal stickers and I, I can put them under where the battery goes. 
Uh, I take a picture. I have the serial number. I have all the proof. Each one of these batteries is like 120 bucks. So uh, if I've got 10 of them, that ends up to be like 1500 bucks. That's a lot of money. So if my van or trunk goes missing or goes down, gets stolen, gets wrecked, et cetera, I have all of this documentation with serial numbers and identification so that the insurance company can write me a check to, to replenish all that and start over again. This is my technique. Feel free to use whatever you choose to use. Uh, document via photos and video for all your assets. I take video of serial numbers and label the tools with my own custom labels. Email the pictures to yourself and your insurance agent and tell them, this is the stuff and the value that I want covered in the event of an accident for my vehicle or in the event of a robbery or nat natural disaster. Okay, if you have a hurricane, volcano, whatever it is that happens, flood, whatever you have happen, vehicle stolen, you want to be prepared for it. And insurance is something that nobody ever takes any time to look into, think about, or prepare for. Now's the time to do it. You got lots of time on your hands. Now's the time to do it. Um, this is the best way that I've found to do it. Email the pictures, and then you actually talk to your insurance agent. You're establishing communication. Hey. I got $30,000 worth of tools. What do I need to make sure that this investment is covered in the event of a total loss? That's what you need to do. Uh, upload videos on YouTube and a private account uh, setting for storage. I just use YouTube and private links as my uh, free cloud, basically. Uh, you can use Facebook for the same way. You make a private group, make a private link, and you can upload them. You change the setting from public or link to private. And then you have your own personal cloud database. You can also store them to Google Drive, Dropbox, or your email. That way they're, they're searchable and you can find them when you need them. Hopefully you don't actually need them, but in the event that you do, you will be covered. <clears throat> Ooh. Uh-oh, what happened? Okay, there we go. All right, so check your insurance policy and make sure that you have the proper coverage. <clears throat> all, all too often, we use the set it and forget it method for our business and our personal insurance plans. As your business grows, you should be increasing your coverage. So when you add a service vehicle, you need to make sure that if you have any other coverage that covers not just the cost of the vehicle, but all the tools inside, you need to make sure that everything is covered if that new vehicle gets in a wreck. Otherwise, you could be at a total loss, all because you didn't think that you needed to add extra insurance to those uh, policies to get the coverage that you need. <clears throat> we often don't know what we have as far as coverage goes until it's too late and you need to file a claim. I found this out the hard way, okay, with my claim. So going back and revisiting that and making sure you have all the proper documentation and the proper policy for you, now's the time to do it. Everybody's working at home. Your insurance agent is probably sitting at home begging for a phone call. Uh, to, to get your insurance policy the way you need it to where you're protected. When everything comes back to normal, you will be protected and it'll make you feel a whole lot better about yourself. It'll make you feel more guarded. It'll make you feel more, more well-prepared. And again, you accomplish something that day. So pick a day this week and say, today is insurance day. I'm going to go through all of my vehicles. I'm going to go through all my policies and I'm going to make sure that everything that I want to covered is covered. Make sure that you have enough coverage and add programs like an inland marine policy to cover the tools and customization of your vehicle. We put thousands of hours into customizing our vehicles to make them work for this trade and industry, and none of that is going to be covered, and it's all going to be a total loss if you don't apply the proper coverage to it. Inland marine is not a boat policy, okay? This is one of the main things that I learned. Inland marine covers your other assets such as tools and high dollar equipment, okay? So you need to break those high dollar key machines down. I think mine is like two or $3,000. If your key machine or something special is two or $3,000 or more, it needs to be identified and it needs to be logged in and you need to ensure that individual piece. If you just have a bunch of hand tools like I showed you, I've probably got five grand in hand tools and Milwaukee hand tools and boxes and crates and everything else. I make sure that that's covered up with an inland marine policy, okay? It's not boat insurance. It's for your tools and all the other things that are not permanently attached to the vehicle. That was the quote that we went rounds with the insurance company about, and I actually had to have my attorney send a letter um, 
my key machine was bolted to my truck. They did not want to cover it because they thought that it was not permanently attached and we had to go argue and argue and argue and argue over it. Luckily, we found that I had a separate policy through my business that was going to cover it. So the auto cut policy did not cover it. However, the business insurance did. These are the things that you need to hammer out now. It'll save you months of anguish and pain and struggling and frustration and high dollar attorney fees if you get it all under control now. <clears throat> Definition of inland marine coverage. Inland marine coverage is a property insurance for the property in transit over the land in certain times of movable property. Uh, the transportation such as bridges, roads, uh, this is just something that we pulled off of Google here, but it's basically saying that don't be fooled by the marine verbiage. Uh, talk to your attorney about how much coverage is needed and in the event of a total loss. Talk to your insurance company about an inland marine coverage policy. You will thank me if you ever need to use it. <clears throat> Hold on one second. All right, so now we're going to have to take time for yourself. As much as you can maximize every minute of the day, uh, you, can, you can maximize every minute of your day. However, you can also burn yourself out. So do not do that, okay? Break these down, as I mentioned before, into those little bite-sized pieces, and then you can manage. You're not building a house today. You're going to have a house in the next couple months, brick by brick. Each brick accomplishes something each and every day. If you try and build a house in one hour, you're not going to be able to do it. You're just going to burn yourself out. You're going to get tired of it. You're going to walk away and you're not going to want to deal with it. So <clears throat> maximize every day, but don't burn yourself out. Take an hour or two from each day and do something just for you. Uh, who was it that, that wanted to have the beer to Keith Moore? Yeah. See, you take that hour or two and you enjoy that beer. And then you have, that's your you time for the day. Um, <clears throat> let's see, you can watch entertainment, cook, exercise, do whatever it is to give your brain a break from money, work, and stress. Okay. Remaining mentally and physically stable is the absolute and utter key through this tough time. When you have your, let's see, uh, helping others. So when you have yourself and your loved ones taken care of, and stabilized, turn your efforts into helping others. All right. This is something that really means a lot to me. And I really, I've enjoyed uh, when people were able to help me out. And so I am so thankful for those moments that I make it a point to every single time I can, I give back. Uh, this webinar is a perfect example. Some of the other classes that we've offered is a perfect example. Giving back to this industry, almost everything got shut down just to let everybody know. Almost all of the training, the uh, interaction, the person-to-person -person talking, all of the conventions, education, and everything has pretty much been canceled or uh, delayed for this year. Uh, Aloha's event hasn't officially announced canceling yet. I don't know if they're going to, but I mean, at this rate, everything is looking extremely grim and we may not be able to get any training, any conventions, any functions out there right now. So this is my way of giving back and bringing webinars to the industry. Uh, helping others and giving back to the community makes you feel better about the overall situation and better about yourself. And it, it does just that. It helps somebody. All right. Um, thinking simple things like dropping off food for others. I've made several videos and posted them online about bringing bags of food, groceries, toilet paper to the senior centers, um, give back to your local community, give back to your trade and your industry, give back wherever you can, whenever you can, <clears throat> okay? Uh, you drop off the essentials to charities, churches, other organizations, uh, anything where they can use the assistance and it'll make you feel better and it'll just help your community and help everybody get through this stronger. When we come out of this, we are all going to be a whole lot stronger. Let me know when you're selling. Okay. <clears throat> Take a deep breath. You can easily work yourself up into a panic with so much uncertainty. Uh, 
make sure you take care of yourself and make sure that you remain as productive as possible until we come back to our new normal. Okay. okay. You're going to create your new normal now. And that is your new normal for the next 30 days, two months. We don't know what the end is, but you're going to have a new normal now. And even after we come out of this, it'll probably be forever different. All right. So remaining flexible and fluid is the way through this. Make sure, <clears throat> make yourself a daily to-do list, make it effective, but manageable. Break each one of these pieces of this uh, PowerPoint down into individual sections that you can manage each and every day. Do not try and do everything all at once. You will burn yourself out and you will make things worse. Stay current with announcements and events. Each day, bring, each day things change. Be ready to pivot to take advantage of offers provided or be ready to shelter and bunker down as each day progresses. We don't know. Right now, it's been a slow decline of bunker down, bunker down, lock things down, quit moving, shelter in place, lock it down. I'm thinking that right now we're probably reaching that plateau and soon things will start being released within the next coming weeks where things will slowly start opening up and opening up and opening up. And you need to be ready to take advantage and jump on that at every opportunity. Uh, if a new stimulus package becomes available, take advantage of it. As they come up, it's all about first come, first serve. Don't get left behind. If you hear about a new stimulus pa package, you better be on the, on the page applying as soon as you hear about it from a reliable source because there's a lot of scams and the legitimate ones are going to be taken up and sucked up quickly. <clears throat> Remain part of or join your local community pages on social media platforms like Facebook. Join your local buy, sell, trade pages, your community announcement pages. If you're part of any of your trade locksmith associations or your personal trade uh, associations, remain part of them. Staying in touch with other people and communicating is going to be a much larger asset than if you do not have it, okay? Okay. People helping people is how we're going to get through this. And usually people in your own industry are going to be able to aid you and point you in the right directions and help you obtain uh, those, those needs and wants as we move forward. <clears throat> Stay active and relevant in your local community. Join the local business, buy, sell, trade, and community pages. Uh, participate in daily or weekly um, Announcements, be informed. The informed are going to be the ones that will survive and remain strong. Information is key here. Listen to the news. Listen to your friends. Listen to other uh, industry-related people. Uh, join your local chamber of commerce organizations. These are all things that are going to strengthen and bring you what the information that you need as soon as possible. And bringing people together and is staying organized. <clears throat> join or keep trade related associations or organizations for locksmiths. It's a LOA, SAFTA, NSO, locksmith nation, and many other groups that have provided information as it becomes available. If you're part of a LOA, you need to stay part of that. Like I said, they don't know what they're doing with their convention right now. So it may still happen. It may not. We don't know. Are you planning on going? Well, if you're not part of that organization, you're not going to know what to do. So these are all things that, I personally feel are going to strengthen and help you out in these times. And they're going to provide you with some much needed information as things progress in the future. So staying part of those organizations is going to keep you strong in this time. Uh, <clears throat> this is a time where the form shine and those in the dark will fade quickly. Take advantage of every opportunity possible. People and groups keep us informed and strong. It is our number one asset. I will live by that sword and I will die by that sword. Keeping people in our groups strong and informed, that is your number one asset. That is 100% the way that I am getting through this. And I know that the way that a lot of other people are getting through this. So remain strong, remain active, and remain in your groups and organizations. <clears throat> Be a leader. If your trade or industry is not offering any training or information or guidance, then take it upon yourself to help the others. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. You can do the same too. You're just one person, but if everybody works together, it creates a group and it creates a community. 
if you can come up with emails, webinars, articles, or other announcements that will inform and help others in your industry, that is key. Send. Have you written articles for Aloha Keynotes magazine? Now's the time. You always say, hey, there's your bucket list. I never have time to write articles. Well, guess what? Keynotes and Safe and Vault magazine both need tons of articles, and it's an income supply. They will pay you to write articles and take pictures. So if you don't have anything to do right now and you have no income, you've decided to shut down, you do not want to work, you do not have any income coming in, you can write a couple articles, submit them to Aloha Keynotes Magazine and Madison Media, Madison Miles Media, and, you know, I mean, they, they can pay you. I think it's like 20, I can't remember. I think it's like five cents a word and 25 cents a photo or something like that. I, I don't know the exact numbers, but I get... I think when I was writing most of the articles, you could make, you know, a hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars, depending on the size of the article, the quality and the content. So that's an in income stream right there. So if you need information about where to send those articles, shoot me an email and I'll get you in touch with uh, the people at Aloha so that you can get your information into them. Take advantage of webinars, social media, YouTube videos and other platforms. Uh, just make sure that the information is correct before dispersing it. Give back when you can. So get out there, check out the YouTube, check out the CPA videos. You're gonna have there's gonna be a lot of junk, but there are gonna be a couple good nuggets in there of good information. Hang in there, fellas, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we all love this little photo right here with the cat hanging in there. We will get through this, okay? We're all hanging onto the rope right now, but uh, we will we will get through it and we will be stronger when we come through on the other side. Things will get better, just like any other natural disaster, or monumental history, and mo uh, monumental moment in history. Things will get better, and we will be stronger. Be prepared to accept that job or work order that has, as soon as the lockdowns get lifted. So, as soon as everything gets lifted, be ready to work. Uh, the market will be highly competitive for the introduction of returning to normal. Okay, so it will be when those jobs do come out it's going to be a fight for every single one of them. Make sure your skills are sharp and you are ready to go. The ones that are organized and ready to perform at peak performance will be the ones that get the jobs and get paid. <clears throat> the last thing that I want to talk about is how are you going to prepare for next time? Uh, this hit a lot of people off, off guard, all right? So be prepared that something not only can always happen, but eventually something will happen. So it's not if, it's when. It's just a matter of what it is, okay? Uh, history has a way of repeating itself. While it may not be exactly the same, you can count on that change is the only constant, all right? Constant is, is, is or change is the only thing that remains constant. <clears throat> Business and the economy are a roller coaster of ups and downs. Take this experience and learn from it. Be prepared. As things get better, slowly stock up on food, cleaning supplies, gloves, masks, and cash, or all those things that you found yourself short on this time. If you got caught, make sure that it doesn't happen again. You're not going to be able to start stocking and building up right now, but it needs to be in the back of your mind so that as we move forward, in a year, two, five, ten from now, you are prepared for something similar to this uh, to happen. And it doesn't matter what it is. If it's a natural disaster, if it's an economic disaster, if it's a viral disaster, you're all still going to need some of those basic things. 30 days worth of food in the house. Everybody should have that. You should be able to live off of your savings for at least 90 days. I prefer you should have six months to a year. To live off of your savings. So if you don't have those kind of numbers in your bank account, those are some things and some goals that you should set for yourself to work towards. <clears throat> Take care and be well. Uh, hopefully this presentation opens up some ideas to remain flexible and sharp. <clears throat> the intent is to encourage the following uh, rules and sanctions currently in place. Most importantly, be ready and educated for those restrictions to be lifted. This break can be used to benefit you and your business, or it can destroy both. The choice is up to you. Be well, be well stay healthy, and take care, my friends. Um, 
couple of things that I want to point out too uh, is Chad Lingefeld has a business talking heads meeting. Uh, like I said, I mentioned earlier that I was uh, part of that one of their one of their meetings that we had earlier through HL Flake. Um, it just gets you in touch with other business owners and other contacts, and it allows you to get to talk with other like-minded people that are going through the same thing. Chad, if you want to post your link up in the uh, comments section, people can check that link out. I believe he does a, a talking seminar each day at 4 p.m. I believe he's on the Eastern Standard Time. So I believe it's 4 p.m. But you can post all of your uh, information on there if you want, Chad. Yeah, he's typing it right now. So he'll, he'll have uh, that posted up here in just a second. But I found this extremely helpful. Uh, I think what Chad is doing is great. He's taking the bull by the horns. He's addressing this. He's confronting it. And he's bringing other experts in to help find answers. And that's what we're doing. We're talking. When we're talking, we're bringing up problems. And we're also bringing up possible solutions. So talking, bringing those ideas out. This is exactly what I'm talking about. This is a great way to do it. And I'm extremely impressed with what Chad is doing. And I highly recommend joining one of his seminars. I found them very informative. Uh, we're going to go back to the lock caddy here. Again, I I just consider the lock caddy part of uh, a business now. I could not actually see myself operating anywhere near as efficiently without one. And the lock caddy should come with every single pinning kit because it's just as important. And to be a locksmith, I think that this system is every bit as important as owning a pinning kit, pinning tweezers, uh, you know, snap ring pliers, any of that specialized stuff that goes to our industry. The lock caddy makes things easy, organized, and efficient. If you notice, the majority of this class, over half the class, we talked about being organized. Lock Caddy gets you organized. Check it out at www.lockcaddy.com. Check it out right now. If you notice this through this webinar, type them an email and say, hey, we saw your product through Wayne's webinar. We're interested in it. Get some pricing and information. And I'm sure Wes would love to talk to you about it. Excellent product. I have this in all of my service trucks and I have it at my shop. I have it everywhere. If I have a pinning kit, there's two or th three or four of these glued down right around it to keep me as efficient as possible. <clears throat> Frame-in number two key machines or frame-in key machines in any way, shape, or form are definitely the best ones that I have found. They are the longest lasting, most durable machines on the market today. Anybody that wants to challenge that statement, go ahead and do so. Uh, I have my beliefs. I've seen these things go through vans that got wrecked. I've personally picked these machines up and thrown them on the concrete, cut a key, and it cut exactly the same as before. So toughest, most durable machines on the market. They will outlast the locksmith in most cases. Check out Framen and a Framen number two key machine. I have these in all of my service trucks as well. They are awesome. <clears throat> uh, Tyler always helps me out with these programs. So check out Tyler with Locksmith Reference. Paul uh, with Horseshoe Lock and Key helps me do editing and helps me bring these webinars to life. So check out Paul with Horseshoe Lock and Key. Thanks for all your help, Paul. Really appreciate it. Josh Pothers is my web guru. If you have anything internet or website related, SEO, marketing, building websites, etc., Josh Pothers with Toronto Webworks is the man. He is a locksmith and an expert web designer. He designs all of my web pages. He does all of my social media marketing. He does everything online and he run he built and runs Wayne's lock shop it, it he's truly amazing if you have any questions check out Josh Pothers with torontowebworks.com <clears throat> as always HL Flake International Key Supply HE Mitchell McDonald Dash these are all part of the same company now they've they've all merged together and by far the best service the most quality knowledgeable staff best products at the best price ship straight to you they are great. There's nothing that I can't get within 24 hours with all of their locations. They're very speedy shipping and they're knowledgeable staff. Check out HL Flank, International Key Supply, McDonald Dash, H.E. Mitchell, and any of their sister companies for some of the best service in the whole industry. You can also check out a 30-day trial for Wayne's Lock Shop. 
If you'd like to check out Wayne's Lock Shop, you've heard about it, but you just haven't taken the leap, now is the time. Just for taking this webinar, that is free. That will be uploaded to Wayne's Lock Shop. You can have a 30-day free trial. Check it out now. I'm also offering a $250 lifetime membership. I do not normally offer this. It's only limited times. I usually only offer it one time a year. This year, I'll probably offer it twice. I'm offering it right now because now is the time that people can go in there and find information. There are hundreds. There's probably almost a thousand videos in there now. They're all HD, high quality, 1080p education opportunities. You could spend a whole month sitting there watching videos and not get through them all and you will learn something new. Everything from social media marketing classes in there, uh, safe work, general installation, electronic access, everything that I do every single day, I record and I put in Wayne's Lock Shop. For this month, I am offering the limited time, one-time fee of $250 for lifetime membership. It will not be offered again very often. Check out wayneslockshop.com or shoot me an email if you are interested. And that is it. I'll ask her, I'll answer any questions. Let's see here. Hey, Wes, do you sell in Canada? Okay, so somebody's interested in the lock caddy in Canada. I'm sure he'll get on there. Uh, if you want to email me, Roman, uh, you can, or you can go to lockcaddy.com. I'm sure Wes will uh, be very interested in checking out your program there. Uh, it's open. Chad says it's open video conference. Anyone in business 15 to 35 businesses each day. Yeah. Chad's Chad's program is great guys. Get in there and talk to some other business leaders. Uh, get those juices flowing, get that brain juice flowing, get that information. Just you simply being in a room with other educated individuals is going to spark ideas. And that's what he's trying to do with this. The greatest minds all get together and they start talking and they start bringing up an option. And now something that Chad says sparks something in my mind and that sparks something in, you know, Dave's mind and that starts something in somebody else's. And pretty soon, at the end of the day, you've got a really effective program that brings out a lot of options that nobody would have thought about if they didn't open up a platform and start talking about it. Even if you don't have any answers or you don't have anything to contribute now, when you get in there and topics get brought up, that will spark your idea. So definitely join these programs. Check out Chad's program. I think it's amazing what he's doing. And I really appreciate that. That's an awesome thing you're doing out there. Bill says, let's see, know what it costs to run your business every day. It is okay to make a profit, mandatory. Don't discount in order to be in business or lose money. Yeah, Bill, that's a great point. I don't like, I don't do any jobs just to be in business. I'm not here just to be, uh, I'm not here just to be here and keep employees busy. I'm here to make a profit. And that's what business is about. That's capitalism. And that's the American way. Uh, get, if you're going to be in business, you better be doing it to make money. Otherwise, go work for somebody else. What are you doing? You know, so definitely that's a good point, Bill. Uh, don't do anything for free. Don't drive the market into the ground. Just go ahead and, and do what you need to do and charge your, your normal rates. I was I will bring that up too. I was going to raise my rates for 2020. Um, and it just got so busy that uh, that I didn't have time to do it. And I was going to use this time to try and raise those rates. But I think now with the pandemic and with everything the way that it's going, the economy is probably going to be slow for a while. I'm probably not going to raise my rates. So I'm going to continue to keep the same rates that I had. That's just a personal decision on me. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Business meeting online. That's Chad's page. That's awesome. Thank you, Chad. Appreciate it. Glad you liked the webinar. Uh, everybody else. Great. If you have any questions, ask them now. I'll remain online for another minute. We're about an hour and a half, uh, one to one thirty. I'm sorry, twelve to one thirty-five. Did you adjust rates? To uh, no, I just didn't raise them. So I just simply did not raise rates. So my rates are the same that they were last year. And instead of adding the ten percent or whatever we'd normally do, I chose not to raise them at all. <clears throat> Yeah, run 20% off your social media marketing. If you have room to offer discounts, yeah, sure, do it. Uh, I actually put a little program in there to where if somebody's really on the fence about using me or somebody else, hey, I got a $20 uh, coupon for you. Or are you in the military? Ex-military, police, law enforcement, they all get 10% off or $20, excuse me, off 
Um, those are all things that you can use to seal the deal. And excuse me, you're not really going to lose any money. Um, you know, if you offer a little bit of a discount, it's already built into my prices and, and budget for discounts to be offered. <clears throat> so we'll stay on. It's 136. I'll stay on for another minute. I'll, I'll answer questions as long as you guys want to go. And as soon as we have about a minute with no questions, then we'll wrap it up. Only through April as of now. Yeah. Yeah. You're the business owners, guys. You guys can decide whatever you need to do for your business and do it now. Uh, if you think that it's best to offer discounts, do so. If you think that you need to stay the same, stay the same. If you think it's best that you need to raise rates, that's up to you. You can do that too. But most importantly, I hope everybody takes away from this that there is a ton of work that can be done. And if you break it down into little bite-sized pieces, at the end of the day, you will have a nice platform built and you will be ready when things return to normal. <clears throat> You're welcome, Rhino One. You're welcome, Laura Miller or Miles. Sorry, your numbers are about this big. <clears throat> You're welcome, Laura. <clears throat> Ted, thank you. Roman, thank you. Chad, thank you. Bill, thank you. Keith, thank you. Everybody that posted anything. Wes, thank you very much. Wes is one of the sponsors that brought this to you today. So definitely check out that lock caddy and give Wes a big thank you. Um, <clears throat> no or very little debt. That's a great point. Yeah, do not. If you can avoid using credit cards and building debt right now, do so, you know, I mean, if, if you have to, and that's the last thing that you have, then you got to do what you got to do. But those that remain out of debt and don't start off in a hole as things return back to normal, if you can start out on a level playing field or maybe even a little bit elevated, you're going to be the one that survives and comes out way stronger and uh, rehabilitates way faster and, and comes back into the workforce ready to swing. Steve, thank you. Mario, thank you. Roman, everybody, thank you. Everybody's great. <clears throat> I'm going to give it about one more minute. Maybe then we'll shut it off. Thank you, sir. L3, thank you. All righty. We'll call that a day. Amanda's typing. <clears throat> Amanda, you're welcome. Everybody's welcome. Everybody's welcome. I'm glad I'm happy to put this stuff on for you guys. Okay. <clears throat> so shoot me an email if you have any questions. I am always available to anybody that needs help. Look me up online. Shoot me an email. Find me on Facebook. Shoot me a private message. You can find me. If you type my name, if you type Wayne Winton into just about any social media facet, you will find me and I will talk to you, chat with you, private message with you, call you can call me. I can talk to you. I am here to help you. All righty. And with that, we'll wrap it up and call it a day. Thank you so much for joining. I will post a link to this. It will be a free link. You do not have to sign up to anything. All you got to do is have a YouTube account or be able to watch YouTube. I will send a link and you can send it out to anybody that you want to send it to. Just get the information out there and hope that it helps people. Thank you, signing off, and have a great day.